So welcome back, and I'm just going to test the alarm because I forgot to do that in the next the uh, last video. That's a good sign. Yeah, that works. Okay. So, if it doesn't do that, you might need to adjust either the uh, spring or the hammer has a little, I don't know if you can see that because of the lighting, but the alarm hammer has a little bit sticking out there where my screwdriver is, and that could be bent either too far this way or too far that way, and that might change things, so you might want to keep an eye on that, but this one works, the, and they're usually about 99% of the time, they are already fine. But if you have that problem, then you might need to take off this finger again, just for better view, uh, which is not hard, and just bend that little finger up or down. That sticks out from the alarm hammer that's moving back and forth right now. So now I'm going to install the um, uh, balance wheel to get the oil. You can either do this now or afterwards. Put a bit of oil, the lightest oil you have, on the balance cups. Which are the little silver things which the uh, balance wheel pivots in. Like that, that's one. To reduce the friction, and that's two, like that. Don't need a lot of oil. And then I'm gonna make sure this bottom balance cup's pretty much out, and then put that out of the way like that, so you've got a nice clear view. Get your uh, balance wheel, and put it in so that that little pin there there's a small pin uh, on that wheel there and that should fit into the center of that fork the end of the fork so I'll put that in and then it's not uh, it's quite a delicate procedure but you want to get get it so the top of those the top a point of the pivot where the spring is is into the top balance cup and then you want to tighten up the back one so that they, it's completely sort of encapsulated by both of the cups, both ends of it. Get some pliers for that. And what you want to do, I find is the best way to do it, is tighten it up uh, to the point where it doesn't move. Like that, it doesn't spring freely anymore. Then you want to do it a quarter to half a turn away and therefore now it doesn't wobble around much maybe a little a little bit more you want a tiny amount of wobble at most maybe a little bit more than that there we go I want to I'm allowing for a tiny bit of wobble in there purely because one of the pivots is blunt but if they're nice and sharp then you want to get as little wobble as possible so you want to get it all the way around so that the uh, pin is back where it should be, halfway down into that thing, so it moves back and forth when you do that. Like that, you can see the thing moving back and forth. So that pin's completely in the middle, and then you want to turn it anti clockwise, and you want to get that end of that spring, that delicate hairspring there, you can see right there, end of that spring on sticking outwards. So you want to then turn it slowly and you want to get the end of that spring through that little gap so like this and then keep turning and it should fit in that gap and turn this out of the way it shouldn't get caught on it and then finally you want to undo it a little bit and get the end of the spring into that gap and not all the way you want about halfway sticking out that is about right there. You get our wedge, and you want to get it so the flat, wide end, the sharper, wider end of it, is towards this way. As you can see, it's slightly thinner on that end. And you just want to pin it in very, very carefully. Get it lined up so the spring is completely level, like that. And then you can push it in with pliers like 
And there we have it. That should work. Now, finally, I'm going to oil the pivots. And this looks like it's going to run really well. From what it was, remember? What it was like before to now, it's a good improvement. Uh, now, there's a bit of a dispute about oiling that pivot there. I do it because I think, well, it's got it's got an oil sink in it, so why not oil it? But I've seen people say you shouldn't oil it. And I'm going to keep doing it until I find out why that is. Not oil all of these. There's um, lubrication, I think, prevents wear. And you do not want to oil them when they're dirty. That's why it's so important to clean out the pivots with a cocktail stick. It's because there's any dirt in there, the oil will pick it up and just become this black stuff. And if you see a clock mechanism with black oil, that's not a good sign. Because that means it's going to wear out. And that black stuff is no longer pure oil. And it's just going to keep grinding and grinding. So you want a tiny bit of oil on each one. If it spills out over the top, um, we should wipe it off. We'll do that just now. If you see, oh, I've got a bit, bit much oil in there. Like that. If you've got too much oil, like that, that should not be the case. And you want to wipe that off as soon as you can. Because otherwise, it'll just run down the plate and drip and cause all kinds of shenanigans. And the last thing you should oil, well, it's up to you which order you do it in, but um, you should oil the te teeth of the escape wheel. So this one here. Uh, don't slather it in oil, but it just helps to uh, do that. And you want to put some oil on the actual pins as well. Like that. One and two on the pins where they touch the uh, wheel. To here. like that and I think that is pretty much it <laughs> so finally I'll undo this one again because it was only finger tight and we're going to put our alarm bell on a big old havoc inducing bell sometimes they get a bit greasy so it's always good to give them a wipe because there's no point having a lovely clean running clock movement with this bell that's just all caked in dirt let me get those on there and i i hope this has been a i don't usually do tutorials on this channel but i hope this is a little tutorial of the way i personally like to repair my smith alarm clocks will become useful in other letting people at home like i am uh, repairing their Smith's alarm clocks and being satisfied with the result because I'd like to sort of make a bit of an effort to try and keep as many of these alive as possible these alarm clocks because um, they're not rare but they're, I think they get overthought quite a bit uh, the Noddy and uh, stuff Noddy and Popeye ones are quite collectible but I think these ones are worth having as well so yeah just keep them around if you've got one, if you know someone who's got one, and they ever think about going away, say, oh, tell you what, I've seen this guy on YouTube repair one. I want to try and give it a go. Uh, and they're not hard to come across. Maybe you get one on eBay. It's a good fun thing to do. Sp spend your time. And it's not a massive catastrophe if you end up bending the hairspring, because there's lots of spares. And it's free to do yourself, I suppose, isn't it? So that's the front. And it should keep running just as well in all directions. If you hear it getting quieter, then that means you probably need to re-clean the balance cups. But I think we got this one running pretty well. So I'll put it back in the case. Put it back. And I will flip it over. Put these nuts back on dirty side up just to look like it's always been like that because I like a original looking thing very patinated as they say and it looks like someone has lost the knob at some point for the back of these and tried to turn it with some big pliers because uh, I don't see 
These are actual scratches, aren't they? That's not finger related. That's not finger wear. I want to fingernails that shot. That's like someone's actually going to like adjust the time like that with some pliers. But there was a knob on there when I got it. So maybe they found the knob after 20 years of scratching out the back. And they said, oh yeah, here's the knob. Put it back on. And hopefully, if we've got everything correct, we will not have lost anything. Uh, and I'm a bit worried, to be honest, because I can only count three out of four... Uh, rear mounting nuts oh no well I'll tell you what I'll put it back on and if I find it I'll put it back on be very very careful you might actually want to get some cloth on the end of your things So, winding keys. And these are very cleverly designed winding keys. These are the most cost-effective winding key designs I've ever seen. And that is because they are a single piece of metal that has been folded over, uh, stamped and tapped. And you don't often see that. For example, a what I'd think of as an, uh, probably a winding key off a much cheaper clock than this one. Let's this go on. Uh, Actually, this is quite a nice one. Well, here's one example. This is two, at least two pieces of metal. It's a nicer key, but does the same job. Oh, here's one. And this came off a very, very cheap Chinese plastic alarm clock. But it's actually made out of two pieces. And they can wiggle around after a bit of time. So, Smiths did a very good job of making a winding key out of one piece of metal that is actually good. Although of course, because the keys are shorter and they don't have a shaft coming out the bottom of it, they actually had to make the, the arbors longer. So I don't know how cost effective that was. Maybe, I mean I assume it was cost effective than making a thing, but there is an extra bit of arbor in there that wouldn't be needed with a more conventional key design. So I'll put this along the bottom. Like that. Well, that works, doesn't it? Oof. And then put a uh, hand knob on. Like that, so it can turn with the hands and the alarm can turn with the alarm. Uh, I can't find that nut. I have done some stuff here, so I might have knocked it off. But I know I'll find it at some point. Maybe it's in this thing. Uh, no, I'll find it. It's not super essential, to be honest, because the later ones didn't bother with nuts at all. But let's just keep it extra secure in the back. But uh, that's the, probably the least worrying part to lose, to be honest. So now we have our uh, dial. So I'll put it uh, so it's in the alarm time and then I'll turn the actual hands backwards so the finger does move because that's the way it's set up in the actual factory you see them doing this to line up both the hands let's put that on like that and I'll turn the hands backwards to uh, about half past seven Because you don't want to go for an o'clock because then it'll be blocking the hand. And then you can put this hand on at half past seven. Like that. And then hopefully, when you turn this hand back to 12 o'clock, and then put the alarm on by giving this hand a quick twist, the knob should pop up from where it was. Like that. Uh, turn this hand backwards a bit. And then... Turn it forwards, sorry, not backwards. The alarm should go off at 12. Not bad. I will just quickly twist that into shape like that. Uh, actually, this hand's been bent by someone already. I'll tell you what I'll do is I will move this hand forward instead. Move that forward by a smidgen. 
and we should be good. So we'll just do another test. Set it to three. Three o'clock. Oh, there we have it. That was cool. Sorry, I jogged it whilst it was ringing. And I think that is it. So I'll put this on three o'clock. Give this a quick wipe down because uh, I put some antibacterial cleaner, but of course I've been sitting around collecting dust. Put that, put that on. And put our chrome bezel on. And set it to the actual time, which is not three, but it is one, just over one o'clock. And you can turn the hands backwards on this. So I'll set it to like that. And I'll set the alarm to 7 o'clock. Keep it off though. And there we have it. So thanks for watching. And hopefully this has helped at least someone repair their Smith alarm clock. There we go.